8. Panic Mode An Alabama mother went into panic mode at the Miami-Dade International Airport in late 2022 when her children disappeared. 25-year-old Camilla McMillie went viral online after a video of her altercation with airport employees was posted on Twitter, Reddit, and TikTok. The woman was checking in for her American Airlines flight to New York City after missing a previous flight when everything spiraled out of control. Police in Miami reported that Camilla became irate and began to scream when her two kids walked away from her without telling her they were going to the bathroom. She immediately started to panic, thinking her children had just vanished into thin air. But what happened next was an extreme overreaction. While hysterically searching for her kids, she demanded that a gate agent assist her. And according to investigators, Camilla escalated things to an unreasonable level when she pulled a machine that reads boarding passes off of a counter, damaging both the equipment and the surrounding area. Afterward, Camilla grabbed a computer monitor and chucked it at the gate agent, striking her in the shoulder. The situation was finally calmed down after US Customs and Border Protection officers arrived at the scene. They held Camilla in custody until police arrived to formally arrest her. The police affidavit stated that she caused more than $10,000 in damages and that she bruised the gate agent's right shoulder during the incident. Camilla, who lives in Alabama, was charged with several crimes, including criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, and aggravated battery. She's currently being held in jail on a $13,000 bond. 7. Banned from Bushwick Deli In late 2018, a man was detained by police officers in New York after throwing a violent fit over a bagel sandwich at a deli in Brooklyn. 24-year-old Edelberto Burgos was arrested at his Bedstoy apartment over a month after he attacked the clerk at a Bushwick deli on November 25th. Based on what officers told the New York Post, he was charged with menacing and assault as a result. Edelberto had previously been arrested for petty larceny in early 2015. In February 2012, he was also arrested for having a loaded firearm in his possession. In footage from the altercation, Edelberto can be heard demanding a cinnamon toasted raisin bagel with bacon, egg, and cheese right effing now. And as he rudely ordered his food, he slammed his fist down on the counter glass. 28-year-old deli worker Sanjay Patel told NBC New York that Edelberto lost it when he was told he'd have to wait 5 to 10 minutes for his bagel due to the number of orders they were already working on. In the 30-second freak-out clip, the man shouted Sanjay specifically, telling him what a big mistake it was to make him wait. And when Sanjay attempts to calm Edelberto down, it only enrages the already irate customer more. And he can be heard yelling, I don't want to listen, before demanding once again that his order be made immediately. Sanjay then gets pelted with a bag of bread before the video cuts off. The worker told reporters that Edelberto threatened to come back to the deli at a later time and shoot him. He also threw a metal stand and a tablet computer at Sanjay's head, along with a shopping basket. But at this point, Sanjay had had enough of the abusive customer, so he called the police, prompting Edelberto to flee the scene. What's even worse about the whole thing is that he didn't even get his breakfast before jumping into a parked car outside the deli. When officers and an ambulance finally arrived, Sanjay was transported to the hospital to be treated for swelling and bruising where the objects had hit him. The whole ordeal was quite traumatizing for the deli worker, and he told reporters that when he goes to sleep at night, he still dreams about it. Unfortunately, there's been no recent updates on the case, and it's unclear if Edelberto ever received sentencing for his crimes. 6. Road Rage In early 2023, a road rage incident resulted in a man being shot multiple times in Fort Worth, Texas. According to police reports, the ordeal occurred at around 10.40 p.m. on January 27th. Two drivers were heading down East Magnolia Avenue between the intersections of Hemphill Street and South Main Street. Then there was some type of exchange or verbal altercation between the men. The driver occupying the suspect's vehicle escalated things when he pulled out a gun and shot the victim three times in the forearm, shoulder, and face. There was apparently more than one person in the suspect's car, but immediately after the shooting, they fled the scene. Amazingly, even though he was badly injured, 
the victim was able to drive himself to the Quick Trip located on Hemphill Street, where he sought medical assistance before being transported to the hospital. Local news stations reported that aggressive drivers and road rage are a problem that many drivers in Fort Worth have experienced. Native resident Ashley Dargai told 5NBC that she mostly feels bullied on the road. Nicole Hendley of Fort Worth reported that dealing with aggressive drivers has become especially nerve-wracking, especially since becoming a parent. Based on reports from the local police, the victim, who hasn't been named, was transported to Harris Hospital for medical treatment. Luckily, they were able to treat his wounds and is currently in stable condition. At the moment, the suspect is still a large, and the case will continue to be investigated by the Gun Violence Unit. 5. Petty Argument A father and daughter from Washington State got into a heated argument over installing a baby gate, and it ended with deadly consequences in June 2019. 68-year-old Wendell Wilson was accused of shooting Lisa Wilson, his 38-year-old daughter, multiple times at the home they share in Renton, just outside of Seattle. In charging documents that were obtained by K-13 News, prosecuting attorneys from King County said that the elderly man shot his daughter six times, striking her twice in the head just mere feet away from the woman's 13-month-old son. Prosecutors claimed that Wendell executed his adult daughter over a petty argument about a baby gate, somehow becoming triggered by the situation. The Renton police apparently told the Seattle Times that Wendell said the fight stemmed over whether the gate would fit in the kitchen. Then things only escalated from there, and the two got into each other's faces before things got crazy. That day, at 4.30 p.m. on June 10th, Wendell called his ex-wife and told her he planned to kill Lila and hung up, only to call her a couple of minutes later to confess that he'd shot their daughter to death. When officers arrived at the scene, the 68-year-old waived his Miranda rights, confessing to investigators right away, saying, got my gun and I shot her. Wendell didn't have a history of violent crimes before that day, but his willingness to stoop to lethal violence in order to settle a trivial dispute proved the grave risk he presented to the rest of the community, according to prosecutors. Wilson was arrested after confessing to the violent crime and he was charged with first-degree murder. He was held in jail on a $2 million bond, but the outcome of the case is unclear. 4. New Mexico Man is McRong In another case involving someone overreacting about food, a man from New Mexico pulled a gun on a drive through worker at McDonald's after receiving the wrong order in early 2021. Law enforcement in New Mexico took a man into custody after he threatened a McDonald's worker with a firearm in the drive through The suspect was apparently upset about a mistake in his fast food order, and in response he pulled a gun on the employee. According to a local news station, KOB4, the ordeal occurred at an Albuquerque McDonald's in January 2021. The suspect, who was later identified as Estevan Gonzalez, reportedly pulled up to the drive through window so that he could complain about an issue with his order. In response, the workers at the establishment replaced his meal, free of charge. However, this wasn't enough for the man, so he got back in line, and when he pulled up to the window, he pointed a gun at the employee. This prompted the McDonald's workers to call the police, and when they arrived on the scene, Esteban drove off. They didn't let him get away, though, and a police helicopter followed him until officers caught up and arrested him. When they were taking him into custody, Esteban told the officers that he was only trying to get a hamburger. He was subsequently booked into the Metropolitan Detention Center. The Albuquerque Journal reported that prosecutors filed a motion to detain Esteban until his trial. As a result of his actions, he was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Unfortunately, the outcome of the case is unclear. 3. Karen Visits Victoria's Secret In mid-2021, a woman named Igioma Ukenta had a bizarre encounter with another woman named Abigail Elpick in a Victoria's Secret store at a mall in New Jersey. Abigail, a white woman, had a full-blown meltdown in the store and tried to attack Ijeoma, who's black. Her behavior only worsened when Ijeoma pulled out her phone to record her. The incident took place at the Short Hills Mall. Ijeoma began recording her interactions with Abigail after she was pushed out of the way as she was trying to browse the store's lingerie collection. 
After pulling out her phone to document the altercation, Abigail charged at her multiple times with her hand open, as if she planned to strike her. But upon noticing her behavior was being recorded, she had a full breakdown. Instead of just leaving the store, Abigail decided to scream at Ijeoma, and at one point she even pretended to faint, lying on the store in front of the establishment's registers. In a separate video of the same altercation, Abigail can be heard demanding that Ijeoma stop videotaping her, yelling, get away from me, as she chased Ijeoma around the store. And you might think it couldn't get any worse than this, but it can, and it does. Ijeoma asked a Victoria's Secret employee to call for security at this point, and shortly after, more security arrived at the store. But apparently, the mall cop couldn't handle the situation to her liking, so Abigail called the Milburn Police Department and they were dispatched to the scene. However, officers treated the ordeal with little to no concern. They even informed Ijeoma that despite Abigail's actions and violent behavior, they couldn't escort her out of the complex. Because Abigail was the one who called the officers, her statement was taken first, and she claimed to have had a panic attack when she noticed she was being recorded. She told the officers she was scared of being professionally or socially shunned for her embarrassing behavior. Abigail was trying to make it seem like Ijeoma was only recording because she was having a panic attack, making it seem like she was the victim in the scenario. And as a result, Ijeoma filed a complaint against the two responding officers for making her feel unprotected, and she had all the proof in the world that she was doing what was justified and they ignored it. After the incident, she pursued legal action against Abigail, the Milburn Police Department, and more security, even setting up a GoFundMe page so that her social media followers could help assist her in the cause. In October 2022, it was reported that she'd raised over $100,000 to defend herself, but not much else is known about her legal battle. 2. Drug-induced psychosis in Medford, Australia, a university student took LSD in July 2020 and became psychotic before murdering his girlfriend, believing she was a demon. 20-year-old Jordan Brody Miller violently attacked his girlfriend of two years, 18-year-old Emerald Wardle, when he suffered from delusions while under the influence of the hallucinogenic drug. Sadly, this was the man's first episode of psychosis, and although the LSD's effects were temporary, they were definitely acting upon him when he killed Emerald. Jordan confessed to strangling the 18-year-old, but he pleaded not guilty to murdering her, claiming that he'd been in a psychotic state and didn't harm her intentionally. By claiming this, he thought he couldn't be criminally responsible for his actions. However, after a jury deliberated for 12 hours following his two-week trial, they found him guilty of murder, and they rejected his claims that the killing was only caused by his undiagnosed schizophrenia. Likar SC, Crown Prosecutor, argued that Jordan's use of drugs and the lack of evidence that he suffered from a psychotic illness pointed at the murder being drug-induced. This meant that Jordan was guilty because he chose to do drugs out of his own free will, consequently ending in Emerald Wardle's death. Even though Jordan may have legitimately believed that Emerald was a demon during his psychotic break, it didn't excuse his actions. In the end, he was sentenced to serve 20 years behind bars. He'll only be eligible for parole after 13 years. 1. Deadly Typo A 35-year-old Colorado resident fatally shot his former boss over a typo on his paycheck in October 2022. The man in question was identified by the Aurora Police Department as Lloyd Clifford Love. He's now facing charges of first-degree murder after shooting and killing 52-year-old Marvin Johnson. On Thursday, October 20th, the incident took place outside of American Eagle Protective Services, the business Johnson owned. The shooting was the result of a heated dispute between employer and employee. Officers were called to the scene at around 7 p.m. after receiving reports of trespassing, which later was upgraded to a reported shooting as they were on their way to the property. They arrived to find Johnson on the floor with gunshot wounds to his body and face. Emergency responders and officers attempted to revive the victim, but their efforts were unsuccessful and Johnson was pronounced dead. Meanwhile, Lloyd Clifford Love fled the scene, but he was arrested as he tried to drive away, thanks to a high-risk traffic stop by SWAT. 
According to the affidavit related to the man's case, investigators explained that the shooting occurred because Johnson accidentally made a typo in Lloyd's paycheck. Instead of writing Lloyd C. Love, he'd apparently written Lloyd K. Love, which made it impossible for him to cash in on his salary. Lloyd is currently being held without bond at the detention center in Arapaho County. He refused to show up to court for his first advisement, so it had to be rescheduled, as reported by local station KDVR. At the moment, the case is ongoing. Have you ever witnessed a stranger having a complete mental breakdown? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.